Well, thank you everyone for, for coming and joining us. Um, we're we're going to get started now. Um, so hello and welcome to our newest Facebook Live event, this time discussing all things Mayflower on AmericanAncestors.org. My name is Lindsay Fulton. I oversee all research and library services here at American Ancestors and the New England Historic Genealogical Society. I'll be moderating today's event. Uh, American Ancestors is a nonprofit organization supported by our members and donors. We provide resources and expertise in nearly all aspects of family history and are pleased to offer such programming for our members and friends around the world. I want to note that we are, of course, broadcasting from home with li various limitations and distractions. We apologize in advance if there are any interruptions from our end and thank you again for your patience. Even again, even if we lose connection, you will have access to a full recording on our Facebook page. Our speaker today is Vice President for Digital Strategy and Communications, Claire Vail. Claire has 20 years of experience as a digital marketing and content strategist for high profile institutions in higher education, publishing and media. Before joining American Ancestors, she was Director of Web Communications at Tufts University where she oversaw the implementation of a large scale website redesign and content management implementation projects for several schools, including the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Claire will lead today's discussion on all things Mayflower, highlighting our webpage dedicated to Mayflower genealogy and history, as well as our Mayflower databases. After Claire's short presentation, we will have time for questions from the audience. If you think of any questions during today's discussion, please type it in the comments section and we will get to as many as we can in the time allotted. Okay, take it away, Claire. Yes. Fantastic. So thank you everybody for joining me um, and thank you for that great uh, introduction um, from Lindsay Fulton, our Head of Research Services. Um, I'm really excited to be with you today uh, as you probably know, I noticed some of you in the chat said that you've been members for a long time. So welcome members, welcome people who are new to us. Um, uh, as you may know, we are the premier destination for Mayflower research pretty much anywhere. I, I say that with great modesty and that's mostly due to, uh, to Lindsay and her team for their excellent scholarship and our publications department and our database team. Um, so a lot of the databases that I'm gonna be talking to you about today were done by, uh, were created by Don LeClaire, uh, who is our Associate Director of Database uh, Technology um, and part of my team. Uh, so I handle marketing and communications, um, but also uh, database uh, technology. So this website that I'm gonna be talking to you today consolidates all of our Mayflower resources. So we have, of course, our normal uh, American Ancestors website at AmericanAncestors.org. Um, and we, uh, in order to prepare for the 400th anniversary this year, several years ago, we launched Mayflower.AmericanAncestors.org, which is this uh, website you see here on my screen. So um, I today am gonna take you through this website and show you the main features and the content. I'm gonna walk you through some of the navigation. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about our publications, our Mayflower research, a lot of which has just come out this year um, and is really, really excellent cutting edge uh, Mayflower discoveries. Uh, or is full of those Mayflower discoveries. And then I am gonna talk to you about our latest database, which is the General Society of Mayflower Descendants uh, Applications Database. And I'm also going to talk about the Silver Book's fifth generation database, because I know a lot of you are interested in proving your Mayflower lines. I know a lot of you already have proven Mayflower lines um, and you're looking to prove even more. So we're gonna talk about how uh, our resources can help you do exactly that. So let's start here uh, on uh, mayflower.americanancestors.org. And I'm just gonna scroll down because a lot of people don't always scroll down on our sites. So this is why we put in these little dynamic arrows. Uh, and you'll see here, our top story is always the top story on the homepage of this site. So right now, of course, that's the brand new applications database, which just launched last week. 
I am going to talk more about that. I want to draw your attention to um, some of the recent publications that have come out this year, and that's of Plymouth Plantation. And of course, this is William Bradford's eyewitness account um, of his uh, time in, in Plymouth and what he observed. What's interesting about this is that there are fresh annotations by Mayflower scholars, and there's also an introduction by Paula Peters, who is a member of the Wampanoag tribe. So here you get um, non-native and native commentary on um, a classic. Uh, so that's quite interesting to take a look at. Also, uh, the Mayflower migration. This uh, it are accounts of the, the um, pilgrims. Uh, the immigrants uh, to Plymouth um, in 1620. In addition to this, you'll find a lot of books on the Great Migration, of course, which is uh, people who came over, including the pilgrims, from 1620 uh, to 1633. Uh, just scrolling down, you'll see a few more things that we're offering this year. We've been extremely busy um, and even busier since uh, the pandemic. Uh, uh, started. Uh, so we're all sequestered here, still working full time, bringing you Mayflower resources. So if you come all the way down, uh, since a lot of you have asked questions, how to get started uh, proving your Mayflower lines, um, or what steps you can take no matter what stage of the process you're in, this is a great resource. It's free. Uh, you don't even have to be a guest member. You can download this now um, and uh, this will take you through the steps, the main steps. It's written by um, Lindsay and a couple other of our Mayflower genealogists. So this is a long article that came out in our American Ancestors Mayflower issue um, and that's definitely worth taking a look at. So I'm going to come back up to the top here and you'll notice that if you look in the middle here, you'll see this meet the descendants. So what we wanted to do when we built this website was to build a sense of community. Um, and this applies to many of you who are descendants. Um, we wanted to see what the diaspora of Mayflower descendancy looked like. So if you click on that circle, it takes a little bit of time uh, you know, to, to load the map because there are so many people out there with Mayflower uh, um, ancestry. So there's an estimated 35 million people around the world with Mayflower ancestry. And many of them have come to our site and put their information in this gallery. So here you see a Google map uh, with clickable pins, and you can see you can kind of get really into this if you have nothing else to do over next week. Um, you can explore this. So we allow people to upload a photo of themselves, uh, put their name, put how many lines they are descended from, uh, their age, if they're so inclined, uh, their location. And then another field uh, people can enter and I'm gonna to try to find a pin here. Here was, here's one here. If they have done their Mayflower ancestry and they want to, they can include a link to their family tree. Sometimes this is on family search um, or uh, another uh, platform that they use for their tree research. So it's really fun to explore this map and to see how many people uh, have put their information into the map and where they're from. You can see there's quite a few people in Europe and um, you know, even over in the Middle East uh, or Eastern Europe, and then of course in the UK. So a lot of fun to explore that. And if you come down here, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that you can see that same information in an infinite scroll. So if you just wanna keep loading, you'll see even more faces pop up. A lot of fun to look at this. What you can see as you scroll down is that we have asked people to make a statement about what being descended from a Mayflower passenger means to them. And I really recommend reading through some of these. They're quite moving, they're quite stirring and patriotic um, and quite revealing. Uh, so please, if, if you are so inclined, uh, you can 
enter your own name and entry on the map. So you just click this button right above the Google box here, the Google map box here. You'll come to this form and you can just fill out the fields. We don't vet it. So we are trusting people to tell us the truth, which I'm sure everybody will. And you just come down, fill out this, put in a capture to make sure that you're not a robot and then press submit. And we will approve it on the back end and then you'll go live. So um, I do recommend taking a look at that. It's really fun. When we launched this site in 2017, we thought, well, we'll get a few hundred people who will put their names in the map. We are up to 3000 people who have put their names in this gallery. So that's why the slow page load time. So I really apologize for that, but that's kind of inevitable. Uh, so if you're just patient, it will pop up um, and you can um, add yourself to the map. So let's talk about some of the other features on this site. Uh, so if you come up here to the top, you're gonna see passengers, nations and cultures, confirm your ancestry. So let's start with passengers. So we wanted to make it easy for people to understand who came over on the Mayflower. So what we did was we took the list of all those, all those folks whom you're familiar with, and we, uh, we created filters so that you can filter by their status. So for example, passengers versus crew members, men, women, um, and also their identity. So men, women, children, who died the first year, um, who came, who went back to Europe, um, who left descendants, and then some of the servants finally. So you'll notice one of the questions that we got when we, when we created this site was, hey, wait a minute, how did you get to a count of 108? That's not the count that GSMD uses. Um, our count's slightly different because we combined passengers, 102 passengers and um, crew members. So that totals 108. If you really want to know the nitty gritty on how we came up with the passenger counts, we included an explanation here. So you can go and read that. So this is a great page to explore because what we have done, and we spent quite a bit of time on this, um, is if you go and click, so I'll just go back for a second to show you, all of these, high, of these names for the pilgrims are clickable. So I clicked on John Alden. Here you can see you get a snapshot of John Alden's biography. So this is the short form of Alden's biography. You can immediately see he's first generation, obviously, as is his wife, Priscilla. And then here are all their children. So you get a little snapshot of what their family was like. And then if you come down here, and I'm not gonna click on it because it takes a little bit of time to load, but what we did was we made that initial map of um, John Olden's modern Mayflower descendants filterable. So all those people who are putting their faces and names into that uh, Google map gallery, uh, if they, they can choose John Alden as their ancestor. And then if you click here from his bio, you're gonna see the people who are just John Alden's descendants. Uh, so that's quite, quite interesting to look at. If you really wanna go for a deep dive into John Alden's bio, you'll see that uh, you can get a lot more information on him. So this includes, you know, how educated was he? What, what belongings did he bring over on the Mayflower? What offices did he hold? A lot of his estate material, um, his death, his marriage, his children. We know quite a lot about John Alden. So if you come down here, um, you're gonna see a lot of interesting juicy details in these notes. This can look kind of officious, but I really recommend reading it, whether you're a, Mayf a Mayflower aficionado or not, you'll become one. Um, I have certainly become one over the course of the last year. I have no Mayflower ancestry. So I just, I find this stuff fascinating. If you love history and you love genealogy, this is gonna appeal to you. So this is research taken um, and created by um, Robert Charles Anderson, who uh, is, is 
certainly one of the world's leading scholars of Mayflower research. Uh, he publishes with our uh, publishing department. So these are his books over on the right-hand side, The Pilgrim Migration and The Great Migration Begins. And of course, they're available through our bookstore. But a lot of the information is here. Um, so definitely take a look at that. So let's move on and look at what's under some of these other tabs here. So nations and cultures, we wanted to uh, make sure that uh, the Wampanoag uh, get fair play and representation on this site. And there's a lot of information uh, about uh, native New England research. There is also a website on wampum and wampum belts. So this was built by Steve Peters, uh, the son of Paula Peters. Uh, and this is his company, his website design company. And this is, an infer this is a website all devoted to uh, traditional wampum, how it was used, how it had uh, monetary significance. Uh, it had, um, of course, uh, political significance in the tribe. Um, and, uh, and it's also beautiful to look at. So, uh, you know, take a deep dive into all of this information here. I won't go through it now, but it's certainly worth taking a look at. Uh, so let's come back up to nations and cultures. There is also a subject guide. Many of you know that we publish very deep dives into various genealogical topics. This is one of our recent productions that, that came out this year. It's all about uh, research into native nations of New England, not strictly Wampanoag, but, but many native nations. So I won't go through all of this here, but you can see uh, lots and lots of different nations represented here. Uh, so coming back, a couple other fun things to look at. Uh, there is a, an in-depth historical timeline here, so you can scroll along um, and click on various places. You will see going all the way back into deep into English history, um, you know, starting with Henry VIII and the Protestant Reformation, um, and really the, the beginnings of what led the, um, the separatists to come over to uh, this, this country, um, the motivations. So this is definitely worth browsing through. It gives you a very full idea of the historical backdrop. Um, and then of course it goes forward to, um, to the end of the Great Migration. Okay, uh, something fun to look at. Many of you may know this, but <laughs> There are famous people uh, who are descended from uh, Mayflower passengers. So you can just flip these tiles and see how many lines, uh, you know, for example, Ellen DeGeneres uh, is descended from many, many different lines here as are some of the other people that you've seen in movies and television, sports heroes, musicians. So we've got everybody. Um, so take a look at that, that's kind of cute. We offer services that will help you verify your Mayflower lineage. So I won't click on these, um, but essentially you can hire our research services folks to help you prove your Mayflower line. They can help uh, expedite the, the proofs required to um, apply for um, GSMD, uh, you know, verification so you can get, uh, if you are eligible to be in GSMD, they can help you with that application. Uh, I will be talking a little bit more about the Mayflower Descendant Journal. We contracted with the Massachusetts chapter of the GSMD to uh, take over the um, editorial and work and the publication of the Mayflower Descendant. So this is a journal that offers cutting edge scholarship uh, uh, on Mayflower ancestry. There's new discoveries being made all the time. Uh, Chris Child is on staff at American Ancestors and he is always digging up new discoveries uh, about Mayflower lines. So that is published in a physical journal that you can subscribe to. It is also available as a database, a searchable database on American Ancestors with American Ancestors membership. 
So I'm going to skip over search databases because we're going to come back to that in some detail. Uh, unfortunately, there were many, many events planned for 2020, but as you may have noticed, there was a bit of a curveball mid-year, so a lot of that, unfortunately, is not taking place, um, but there are still some programs and events going on. Um, we have certainly switched over to a lot of online events, so if you check our homepage, you're going to see a lot of Mayflower-oriented programming coming up at you from now probably through the middle of next year and well we're always talking about Mayflower so you can always come back and see what we've got going on we certainly have um, a great many resources I do want to mention that every time we do a webinar every time we do a program it is archived on our site you never miss anything or you never have to miss anything we understand everybody has lives everybody's busy we have an archived page of webinars. You can search that archive and filter it to find exactly the topic you are looking for. If there's time, I'm gonna show you that at the end of this session, because I wanna make sure people know that they don't have to tune in exactly at the time that the webinar is being offered. Um, and if anything, we have doubled the number of uh, webinars and online programs that we've offered uh, since this whole COVID crisis began. Uh, finally, there is our shop, um, and I will remind you at the end, but we are offering 20% off um, a great number of Mayflower books and products in our bookstore. That only goes through November 25th, so that's today, that's the next five days. Um, so that's worth taking a look at. You don't need any special code, you just will get 20% off. You don't need to be a member. We also, if it's of any interest, we created some Mayflower products uh, that you can purchase through our Zazzle store. Uh, so we did the designs for these and they're sold through the Zazzle platform. So it's kind of cute. Okay, so let me take a, um, a, a closer look now at uh, our databases. So this, this is where many of you are going after downloading the Mayflower Guide and making sure you read through that first. This is where a lot of you may want to come to get started on your journey. So we've rounded up all the Mayflower related databases on this site. Of course, these are all accessible from AmericanAncestors.org. You don't have to go here to, to find this. I'm going to show you at the end of this talk how to find them on the American Ancestors site in one fell swoop. Um, but if you wanna start with the Mayflower site, you can come to this page. I'd recommend reading through the descriptions for these databases before you click so you know what they are. Um, there's two that are probably jump to the top of the list as the most important for Mayflower research. And those two, of course, are the Mayflower family's fifth generation descendants, 1700 through 1880, this one here, and then also our most recent one launched last week, which is the General Society of Mayflower Descendants membership applications. So um, a lot of you will have questions um, around what, what do I use these, how do I approach these two databases? Which do I do first? Do I just do random searching? Um, no. <laughs> You'll want to start out, uh, depending on where you are in your research and what you're trying to accomplish, um, you, you want to start out with one or the other. So I'm going to start by talking about the Mayflower family's fifth generation database. So this, this is the fifth generation, an index of the fifth and sixth generation descendants of Mayflower families. And this database indexes information from the silver books. So some of you will know what the silver books are. They're the gold standard um, for Mayflower descendant research. So this research was done by GSMD. Uh, the books are published by them. Uh, they're available to buy through us or them. Uh, so what's important to know is that this 
fifth generation database is, is what it says. It is only the fifth generation. You'll see information about the sixth generation. It is not all the silver books, one through five. Um, it is just the fifth generation. However, you're going to see most of the information you need, uh, one through five, by searching this database, or you're going to be able to intuit it. Um, so if you go to uh, this, the search now button, you're going to land on the main search page. Um, and let me, let me talk a little bit about why you would use this. So uh, if you're looking to validate that you're a descendant and you get a match in this database, you're pretty certain that you have Mayflower ancestry. So you want to start here um, and you want to look for your ancestor in this database. If, if you don't find your ancestor in this database, it's possible that you you will find an ancestor that is six through 12 generations. So that's gonna be in the applications database or is more likely to be in the applications database. Um, but right now we're gonna talk about the fifth generation. So um, let's start here. So uh, one important thing to remember that when we talk about Mayflower generation research, the, the pilgrims are generation one. So William Bradford, John Alden, they're generation one. Uh, you know, in, in other types of genealogical research, you think of yourself as one and then you go backwards. Mayflower, Mayflower goes forward from um, the original pilgrim. Mayflower ge uh, genealogical research goes forward. So, Let's talk about how to search this database. There are 31 volumes in the fifth generation um, database, and there are half a million searchable names. So 575,000 searchable names here. When you come to this page, you're going to want to scroll down. Um, it's tempting to just start filling out the search form, but I would recommend scrolling down and taking a look at the data that is indexed for this database. So you can see right here, read the search tips. You can search by first last name, first and last name, year, record type. So this is mainly birth, death, and marriage records in this database. Uh, you can search by location. And in this database, you can actually search family members. So spouses, mothers, and fathers are occasionally indexed here, and that can be useful material. Um, you can also search by keyword. Uh, you'll see that wildcards are supported. So this is, uh, you know, instructions here on how to use those, those characters. If you keep scrolling down, you're going to see a description of what's in this database, and then you're going to see the silver books for this database. So you can see, you know, John Alden came from a big family. So there are one, two, three, four John Alden volumes in the fifth generation silver books database. Um, and you can see that some of, you know, uh, some of the original Mayflower passengers had very small families or didn't have families. Um, so uh, their, their trees and their, um, uh, their books are very, very small. If you come all the way down to the bottom, you get citation information and you can get a brief URL for those of you who are documenting all your research. I know there's a lot of you. You may want shorter URLs than what you see up here in the browser window. So I'm gonna come back up here um, and start from the beginning. And we're gonna do a search. I know that my colleague has an ancestor named Nathan Snow uh, who has a birth record in this database. And I'm gonna search here. And here I get my search results. Over on the left here, I can filter my search results to be more exact. Um, that's going to lessen the number of search results that I get. Right now I have this set it broad. And what that means is 
if you keep scrolling down, you're going to get to a dividing line. Uh, what you're going to notice is that I did search on birth records. So you can see that the birth records came up first and it met all my, the, the most, the entries that meet my exact search criteria come up first. It gets a little fuzzier as you go down, you get deeds, you get baptism, you get marriage records. And then um, the search criteria gets a little more generous here. So, uh, or the search results get a little more generous. So I'm not looking at Nathan Snow's anymore. I'm looking at Ames's and Edson's and Kent's. Uh, so that's useful to know if you don't find exactly what you're looking for. Uh, so here's something interesting to note. Uh, I know that Nathan Snow, if I look here, has a record and this is going to be the page the the image the camera indicates it's an image of the relevant page for Nathan Snow uh, in the silver books so it's going to be a scan of that page in the silver books and you can see Nathan Snow was born in 1751 um, you can see that he is sixth generation and that his father is fifth generation, his father was also Nathan Snow. So of course that happened quite a bit. You can see the lineage going backwards here. So we come all the way back to the Mayflower Pilgrim, um, Peter Brown, uh, who has a little one next to him because he is first generation. And then you can see that the same Nathan Snow, sixth generation Nathan Snow is also related to John Alden. So he's got two lines right here um, that you can see right away. And if I click on the record, so now I get a thumbnail view of Nathan Snow's record. Um, I can, there's a, there's a bunch of interesting things here I wanna show you. I can zoom in, I can hit view, and then I get the full page record. Um, let me go back for a second and show you a few more things on this page before we go forward. There's a great deal you can do. Um, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. There's a citation. I can copy the citation if I'm working with two tabs open and I'm pasting some of this information into a research log. I get a short URL if I want to come directly to this page. Um, we kept all the information about the volume, so you can always refer down and see that. But I want to show you two things over on the right, because what we find is a lot of people focus on, you know, the immediate goal, which is looking at the image of that, that page or that transcript. Um, and there's a lot of sidebar information that we've thought long and hard about bringing you. Um, so what you're going to see, I'm going to start down here, is on this page, we've listed all the other names that could be relevant to your search. So this is likely to be sisters, brothers, spouses, you know, other relevant people um, that have some relation to Nathan Snow. So if you want a quick glance of who's included on this without having to hurt your eyes and scan the actual image, you can look right here. Um, another interesting thing, and this is relatively recent, meaning last two years, we now have hintable databases. So we not only have a free tree platform, so you can log on and create um, your own family tree on American ancestors. You can get hints off 123 databases. So um, two of those are the Mayflower databases that I'm talking about. So the applications database and the fifth generation database will deliver up hints if you have created a tree. So that's incredibly useful. You're gonna, and these are the hints you're gonna see um, if you have a Nathan Snow in your tree. Um, so you can see here, there's, so there's the two databases that I mentioned, but there's also 121 other databases that will have potentially have Nathan Snow in them. So um, you see a lot of entries here from Mass Vital Records. Um, and I guess the other ones here are fifth generation and applications, but useful to see and look at. Um, it makes your journeying through our databases a little more uh, elegant and quick. So now I'm gonna go to the close up view of this transcript and I can use these controls to zoom in. Here I see the list of Nathan, 
and his brothers. So if I want to see, I want to know a little bit more about this. So I can see here up at the top that this entry is taken from the Peter Brown volume, because we know that Nathan Snow is related to, is, is descended from Peter Brown and John Alden. So this is volume seven of Peter Brown. What I can do here is use these pages to page through um, the entire entry. So I can go back to the beginning. I think I went too far. So if I go a little further here, this is just like I've opened up the volume in a library and I'm reading through it. Um, and that's quite useful for people who prefer a different method of browsing, you know, more like reading through these entries. Um, so here's Nathan Snow's entry. And I can see there's fifth generation because we know there's a Nathan Snow who is sixth generation. And now I'm just going to page through and read the entire entry. Um, and then, you know, you can see the next one is Abigail Snow here. You can also identify, and this is going to be particularly useful with applications, with the applications database, you can identify the range of pages so if you, that you want to print out. So if you want to print a particular range of pages, you'll just put, you know, the number of pages in there and you can hit print. Um, and then you'll be able to have that entire uh, printed copy for your records. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch over now to talking about, uh, hang on just one sec. Um, sorry. Give me one sec. All right. Uh, I'm going to switch back over to talking about our other database. So if you are looking um, for generations six through 14, you're going to want to go to the applications database. So, and I'm switching right to this, but if you come back to, this page on the Mayflower website, you can go directly into the applications database. So th this was the result of a partnership, three-way partnership between the General Society of Mayflower Descendants um, with Family Search and, and us. And so GSMD supplied the information. And so these are applications uh, that we scanned and indexed uh, between 1897, um, which was when GSMD was founded, and 1920. So the 1920 cutoff is because of a privacy rule. So no one who, I mean, potentially, I suppose somebody could be extremely long lived, but the cutoff for us is December 31st, um, 1919. Um, so you'll see only people who were born before that date in uh, this database and also in the tree versions um, of this database. So if you click search now, you're going to get to the same page uh, where I am here. And you're going to notice that this looks a whole lot like the fifth generation search form, but it's a little different. Uh, so here you can search by the volume. Uh, so I believe there's 24 volumes, searchable volumes here. You can search first name, last name. You can do a year range. Uh, you can do a location. But you can also search by um, the, the uh, general member number. So that's a number that GSMD assigns uh, to a person. So if you know that number, you know that somebody in your family has applied for GSMD membership and you know that number, you can just go ahead and search and find that number. You can also search the supplemental application numbers. You can also search by generation. And remember, this is Mayflower generation. So um, going forward from one um, being the original Mayflower passenger. Even though it says father, mother, spouse here, you can only uh, search by spouse. And so again, I recommend always scrolling down and looking at the searchable fields. Uh, you know, 
these forms are built to truncate and only let you search the indexed data in that database. Uh, but in the case of the family members um, area here, this doesn't, you know, this is a slightly misleading. Uh, we can't easily change this, this naming convention here. So just double check, it's only spouses that you can search here. Uh, if you're familiar with what a GSMD application looks like, uh, that's great. <laughs> if you're not, we've given you two examples here. So they change their styles over the years. Uh, they look a little different uh, from decade to decade, let's say. So one of the initial questions we got when we launched this database was, I've been searching for William Bradford in your database and you don't have him. What happened? <laughs> And the reason that you're not going to find the first generation people in this database is they're not in there because GSMD assumes that you're applying on a line. So it's, it, you'll see Edward Winslow, for example, as the first entry on the written application, but you're not going to see him indexed in the database. You'll see him referred to in the database, but not indexed. So it starts with generation two and it works its way downward for the indexed data. But of course, you can always refer to the image and see the whole thing. So, um, you know, just to show you the different styles here, here's, a, I think, a later style uh, for what this looked like. And so you can see it's the person who's applying, the uh, Mayflower ancestor they're applying under, the um, uh, state chapter. So where they're applying, you know, whether it's the state of California or Massachusetts, uh, that they're applying to, and then the signature, and then the lineage information will start. And on the fourth page, you're going to find possibly, if it's included, source documentation or references to source documentation. So one important point here is the, the sources, the birth records, death records, the actual records, the proofs are not in this database. The, the information that's indexed here is the applications. Um, so that's, that's an important thing to remember. You can, you can go to GSMD and ask them for the proofs if, if that's what you're looking for. So why would you use this database? I talked about this a little bit, um, but if you've, if you've heard that you have a Mayflower line and you really don't know, you might want to start with this database. Um, you really don't know where it is or, or, you know, how it dates back. So, like, for example, if somebody said, if somebody has said there's family lore and somebody said we are related to John Alden, um, you know, you might want to start by searching on that line, whoever, whichever, you know, matrilineal, patrilineal line, if you want to put your great grandmother's name in this database and see where it takes you, start with the applications database. Okay, so let's come up here. I'm gonna um, just do a quick search to show you, and I'm gonna search for Harry. None of these people are related to me. Um, one of the downsides of working for a genealogical organization is that you don't have time to research your own genealogy. <laughs> I haven't had time yet, but I'm looking forward to it and I'll be much better equipped when I do. Um, okay, so I'm searching for Harry Faye Whitman. Uh, here you can see I got a hit on him. So just to deconstruct what this means here, uh, I can see that the record is dated uh, 1913. So that's when he applied. Um, he applied through the California GSMD chapter. Uh, there is his general number. Uh, so I could take this and go back and search on this. Um, I can see that there are four pages for his application, and I can see that his ancestor is Peter Brown. So let's take a look at that. And now I'm going to behold Harry Faye Whitman's application here. So you can see again, there are the other names included on this application. So at a quick glance, you can take a look at all these. You can see the citation information. Now, oh, the exciting part, if you scroll down, on every hit you get on um, this database, you're going to see this list of all the trees. So we have, we have the applications database, and this is the first time we have done this for certainly for the Mayflower. 
is um, we have turned all these GEDCOM files into trees on our tree platform. So you'll be able to explore these as trees. Now you have to be a paying member of American Ancestors to access the applications database and the fifth generations database. You only have to be a guest member to see the data in the trees. So it's an important distinction. Um, we are the only place anywhere where you can access this data as a database. Uh, so you can't access it as a database on family search um, and you can't access it anywhere else. No one else has it except us. Uh, the tree information is available in genealogies on family search, um, but of course we prefer you access it here. Uh, so if you, if you look up here at the top, uh, you'll see here is Harry Whitman's application. So I am going to click on that. It didn't take too long. And here I have the scanned image of his application. So I, uh, if you come up here in this page area here, you see that it's, of course, he's descended from Peter Brown, so it's in the Peter Brown volume. You can see it's on page 206 of the Peter Brown volume, and this is the first page of Harry's application. So just like before, if you want to page through it, you can see there's the title page, there's the lineage, and it takes a little bit. Um, there's a little bit more information. Uh, I think the approval is on page three, and then we're on to another one. It went a little bit too fast. So in any case, I think it's the approval on page three and then um, references to the source documentation on page four. Again, you can just bring up your print range um, and that will allow you to print out just Harry's application. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's in trees in the tree versions of these um, Mayflower family uh, GEDCOMs essentially or, or lineages. So the cutoff for the database is the applicant's birth date. So if, if somebody applies, uh, we indexed applications for people who had a birth date of um, December 31st, 1919. There's nobody after that uh, who's, who's in the database. For trees, we looked at applications that went past that date, um, but we only included, we, we only indexed people who were born before 1919, December 1919. So there are more people, more names in the trees than there are in the database. So if you don't get a hit on your ancestor in the database, it is certainly worthwhile to search trees. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom. I'm gonna search one of the smaller trees because obviously some of the trees are quite large. We had to break John Alden's tree into two trees because there's a, an upload limitation on the number of names. You can see John Halland and Brewster also had huge families. Very, very busy, busy men. Um, so if you come down here to Edward Winslow, he's, um, I guess, one of the less busy ones. And so if you come down to the tree, now you're in our American Ancestors tree platform, which was launched two years ago. It is free to create a tree. Uh, and you, all you have to do is go to our homepage, uh, create a guest account if you're not already a member or a guest. Uh, log, once you do that, you're going to see at the very top of the screen the option to create a tree. Um, and then you can create a tree. So what you're looking at here is uh, Edward Winslow's tree. Um, so you can see here's Edward Winslow and here's a view. So you can continue to click down and expose all the people in his tree. Uh, I'm gonna come back up. Uh, so to save real estate, screen real estate, uh, it jumps, you know, it only exposes so many generations. But if you come up to, where'd he go? Uh, well, let's, let's talk, let's, 
this is still too far down. Uh, hang on one sec. Let's go back a little bit. I want to go back to Edward Winslow. I lost him. Okay. Well, let's start here. I just wanted to show you really quickly one of the features of trees. You can see other view types, other graphical views of the people in the tree, but whomever you start from in that initial tree, whoops, some of it takes a long time to load. Um, so here we are. I'm just going to go backwards. Hang on one sec. Show you here. So you, you can use these graphical views if you just want to see um, the same information displayed in different ways. So I'm going to come up here. You can search all the trees uh, for various people. So I know, for example, that um, in the Winslow, or let's say I've heard that the Campbells are, um, somebody said, you know, I think there's a Campbell in the, the Winslow line. So I'm going to search on Campbell here, and you can see it auto prompts and auto fills uh, what your, the name that you're searching for. So you can see right away if your ancestor is in this tree. So you get the, the primary information right up front. So this is Marguerite Campbell. You get her birth date and her death date. Um, you're going to see her events, her life events laid out here. Now, if you come down to name this little um, hashtag here, you're going to see more information um, that's going to be helpful to you. So I can see that Marguerite was on Edward Montgomery Campbell Morrissey's membership application um, to GSMD. And so he applied um, and her name is indexed on that application. So that's why I'm seeing her in the tree. So you can see that here is her general reference number. So that's really important for people doing Mayflower research. Okay. So I just want to show you those, those are the two main databases that you'll be using. There are, of course, lots of other databases that are helpful for Mayflower research. So if I come back to this page, you'll see that most of them are listed here. There's early New England families. If you're doing colonial-based research, we have a lot of information for you. Uh, there's mass vital records, of course. Um, as as people migrated across the United States and over to Europe in some cases, um, you know, that obviously is going to happen in the more happen more often in the later generations. Um, you know, some of the broader databases are going to be a better use for that. But for the early period 1600 through 1850, we've got a great deal of information here. And of course, the applications database is the one that's going to help you with the later generations. Um, I want to show you really quickly. Uh, do we have time, Lindsay? <laughs> no? <gasps> oh, we don't have time. <laughs> I didn't realize. OK, really quickly. Um, so I just, oh, we don't have time. I'll, I'll just stop. Do you want to start asking questions? Sure. sure. OK, sorry. I'm going um, on a little long. So that's okay. There's there's a lot of inf there's obviously a lot of information. Um, so I would say stay on um, stay sharing your screen because I think a lot of these questions you're gonna probably have to go potentially go back to the um, to the database to explain it as as well as you can. Um, so we got a bunch of questions about both of the databases. So the Mayflower family's fifth generation, quote unquote, Silver Books generation, and then also the application. Um, so Linda asks, is it possible for someone to be included on the ancestry trees database and not in the fifth generation database? And then also, you know, vice versa. Is it possible that someone's in the fifth generation that doesn't make it to the trees? 
it's possible for somebody to be in trees and not be in the applications database, but if they're in trees, uh, they're going to be in the Silver Books database. That's my yeah. understanding. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And gotcha. So really, the yeah, I understand. So the 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 tree is going to be covering all the individuals who are who have applied. So we're restricted a little bit by that, you know, your ancestor has to actually go through the process of applying to um, to the Mayflower Society to be included. And then also has to be, they have to be born before uh, January 1st. The, the, um, the, the applications database, the database uh, looks at the application, the applicant. And so okay. if you're, if you're, um, if you're applying, uh, we took, we took the GSMD applications and we looked at the applications, uh, the applicant and we put, you know, obviously it goes backwards. So all those people are indexed. If, if you're born in 1950 and you applied in 1980, you did all your ancestry. We include everybody on that application who was born before 1919. So the trees are going. The trees are going to have more people in them. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I think that answers her question. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other question is is a little bit more uh, nuanced, and, and Melanie kind of answered it in the chat, and I can talk a little bit more about it. But Janice asked if it was true that Howland descendants are not in the Silver Books, and the the answer to that is it's complicated. <laughs> um, so there is. There is a Howland Silver Book. Um, there's also a, a multi-volume set of picked and press books that are um, that, that's done on the Howland family. Uh, they have a blue cover, and those are books that are accepted by the by GSMD. So if you're applying to the Mayflower Society, those are acceptable uh, books. That's considered also the gold standard, even though they're not part of the Silver Book collection. Um, I won't get into the politics of why that happened, but that's the one passenger that is going to have uh, themselves represented both in the silver books and also in the picked and press books. Um, from my understanding, the trees that we created um, were using some of the information that's on that's in those picked and press books, as well as um, what's in the what's in the applications themselves. So that's just a very specific question <laughs> that actually a lot of people ask um, Mr. John Helen. So, um, okay, so that covers the fifth generation. So the, the others that we wanted to talk about uh, are the applications themselves, the applications database. So Sandy asked, um, how do you select the name one uses to begin a search if you have no idea who to search or which one it's going to be. Do you have some suggestions for, so if your grandmother told you your, her whole life that you were, had Mayflower ancestry, um, who would you search for in that Mayflower applications database? I would search for your grandmother um, or, or maybe go back as far as you can go back, uh, you know, on, on your grandmother's line. Uh, and search first name, last name, and, you know, but always start broad, start with the broadest possible criteria. So start with a name and, you know, see if you get hits and you can narrow it down from there. Uh, one, of the, one of the mistakes that people make is by filling out all the information they know in the search form, and that can lead you to think that, uh, you know, you're not getting a hit. So you want to start as broadly as possible. Um, but I don't know, Lindsay, what do you think? Where would you start? Well, I think the key piece of information is the, is the 1919 cutoff date. Mm. Um, so if, you're, if your grandmother who's telling you the story is born in 1932, don't search for grandma. Uh, you know, search for her, her parents. Uh, right. they, they may be included. And she might have been the person that applied to the society, um, to the Mayflower Society. Uh, but we're going to restrict 
her information because of privacy, but it will still show up on the trees. It will, but with trees, you, you can't search all the trees at once. You have to choose a volume. I mean, you okay. have to choose a family. So it might be, a, you know, a fair thing to do to go back as far as you can on that line, you know, for a name that you know, and start with the applications database and see if you get a hit. Um, and, but if you want to search trees, it would help a whole lot. So you don't have to search 24 volumes, so you have 24 trees. Right, right. So that you know that it's, it would be really helpful if your grandmother said, we think we're a John Alden descendant, then you could start with the trees. Right, okay. Yeah, if everyone in your name has the middle name, if everyone has the middle name Alden in your family, then maybe start with that one. It's a tip off. <laughs> gotcha. Um, we have also, we had two, two, a combo of a question, which was asking about the applications themselves. So the applications that are included, are those always successful applications? So those were approved applications? Uh, the, the ones that are successful are in, are, well, if there's been a correction to those applications, um, it's not included here. So uh, there may be, you know, there, there's always going to be some indexing errors, but there may be erroneous applications in here as well. Okay. So we can assume that, so we shouldn't assume that they are, that the line is absolutely valid and we should do some additional work to verify that. I would recommend hiring Lindsay Fulton to do that additional <laughs> work. Fifth generation silver books, you're pretty certain that that's vetted, um, you know, gold standard information. Applications, you want to you want to make sure that you do a little work to reprove it, especially if it's an older application. Yeah, yeah. So just as a as a real deep dive, if we're if we're really concerned about uh, applying the Mayflower and the application numbers, so. Um, it, in the eyes of the General Society of Mayflower Descendants, if you are applying using an older application, if that application was approved after the year 2010, you can use that application and just piggyback on that application with really no issues. They're not, they're, they, well, they double check pretty much everything, but that's, that's the cutoff that they've given. So that application number starts around 90,000. So you'll see, you know, when you're when you're searching on the on the applications database, you'll see the applic applicant number. So they'll get they'll get a um, they'll get a general number and then they'll also get a state number. So the, the general number is what we're concerned about here. And if it's over 90,000, um, then if it's if it's under that, then you should always be checking all of those source documents. Now, the nice part about those applications is that they're telling you most of the time, um, you know, what 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 the person used in, in terms of, of proof. So you can it's a it's a great roadmap, as I like to say, uh, you know, it, it's at least giving you hints of, of where to look. Um, and then I have one final question. Actually, I have two final questions. Um, Bart is asking, if my uncle was born in 1907, but applied to GSMD after 1919, is he going to show up in the database? He was born in 1907. And he and applies applied. after yes. 1919. So it's all based on birth date. Yes. Okay. So you could be born in, well, you'd be very old, but you could be born in 1918 and, and apply in 2020 and you would technically be included. It, it would be the last thing you did, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Great. Um, and then one final question. Um, uh, Julie is asking, can you download those GEDCOM files that are, that are on Ancestry? You cannot. And what I, you, you cannot download the GEDCOM files and you cannot uh, merge them into your own tree. So as I said before, really quickly um, on the homepage of American Ancestors, if you are logged in, even with a guest account, certainly with a member, you know, a paying member account, you'll see trees. And if you've never created a tree, you'll see create a tree. Um, if you click on that, you're gonna go to your tree. Um, 
If you sign up for hints, over on the left-hand side, you're going to see all the navigation and features for trees. If you sign up for hints, um, you're going to be able to select uh, American Ancestors databases as a source for hints. So you will get hints off, um, off the fifth generation database and off of the applications database. And you can, of course, uh, manually import that information through a browser extension called the Web Clipper. I would recommend going to the American Ancestors website and very quickly, quickly um, if you scroll down here to programs and go to view archived webinars, uh, you're going to be able to filter by subject. This is what I referenced earlier in the presentation. Uh, there's how to videos and they're um, well, that's not popping up for me right there. But um, if you scroll down these, you're going to see a lot of our past webinars. There's a big long webinars on how to use trees. So if you haven't used trees before, uh, listen to that. Um, that's really helpful. There's also additional Mayflower resource webinars here um, that can be hugely helpful. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Claire. That was that was a great deep dive into you know some of the. Uh, you know, one of a kind databases that we have here at American Ancestors. So very much appreciated. Um, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, before you leave the event, please leave your thoughts in the comment section to give us your feedback. As we continue to expand our Facebook Live events and online offerings, any and all feedback is extremely helpful and appreciated. Our next Facebook Live event will be about getting the most out of a probate record. This is scheduled for December 18th again from three to four East Coast time on Friday. In this presentation, you will learn about all of the one-of-a-kind one databases and resources that we have here at American Ancestors and how you can use them to get the most out of a probate record. And if you would like to engage with us even more on social media, we have a Twitter chat uh, every Tuesday afternoon. The next topic, uh, surprise, surprise, is about Mayflower. Um, and you can follow us using the hashtag Our Ancestors. Finally, if you'd like to access more how-to resources or learn about upcoming online education programs, please visit our online learning center, AmericanAncestors.org education. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you at one of our online programs in the future. Goodbye for now.